Greetings, my friends. I want to thank you all for subscribing. I want to thank all of my channel members for supporting me in this endeavor to save pop culture. And if you are not subscribed, please consider supporting this channel. We need you. Thank you. My friends, yesterday was a disaster for the Walt Disney Company as they were forced to publicly confess that in many ways, Disney is failing and failing hard. This confession, as dramatic as it was, and we'll get to the particulars of that in a moment, is but the latest in a long string of failures from a company for whom failure has become a habit like smoking cigarettes, smoking weed, or smoking company profits in rolled up $100 bills, burning cash as an offering on the altar of woke, creating crap like Peter Pan remakes, Little Mermaid remakes, and anything to do with Kathleen Kennedy. Disney has forgotten that when you make products that nobody wants, nobody buys them. No matter how socially virtuous your messaging is, because snowflakes don't spend money, people. They just hang out in their safe spaces, shaking like a spooked chihuahua, standing in an icebox, listening to a thunderstorm. Yesterday's Disney earnings report was one hell of a wake-up call, not only for Disney, but for the stock market which took one look at Disney's earnings and losses and turned into Roberto Duran, saying, No mas. No mas, Senor Disney, por favor. No es bueno. And Senor Disney is once again being forced out of its self-affirming woke echo chamber by the harsh demands of a non-woke reality, once again being confronted with the lesson they still refuse to learn after all these years. Get woke. Go broke. Yes, my friends, the Walt Disney Company has served as a kind of Wuhan of wokeness for many years now, a ground zero for the woke virus, deliberately and stubbornly doing everything it can to undermine Western civilization one story at a time, one violated hero at a time, one perverted American value at a time. They love huffing their own farts and admiring how virtuous they are, and yet money doesn't lie, my friends. Money always tells the truth about success versus failure, and Disney is failing spectacularly, as evidenced by the revelation, or rather the confession, that Disney Plus has lost millions of subscribers and is losing tons of stock value in after-hours trading, for as my best friend and arch-nemesis Harvey Cthulhu frequently tells us, The wages of woke is broke. Exactly, Harvey. The wages of woke is broke. It beggars belief at this point that anyone is surprised by Disney losing subscribers and company value. I mean, really? After bombing again and again on Disney Plus with crap like Willow, Obi-Wan Kenobi, She-Hulk, Book of Boba Fett, Peter fucking Pan, on and on and on. Woke failure after woke failure. Stupid is as stupid does, I suppose. I think it's ironic that every leading character at Disney these days is a woman, but unfortunately for Disney, no one on cash is. Washington, Lincoln, Jackson, the dudes with their faces on money are not women, and no amount of woke wishing is going to make it so. If the force is female, the cash ain't. And that's maybe one reason why their stock is currently underwater and in the toilet. Basically, an iceberg for the tidy bowl man. How right you are, Harvey Cthulhu. In a Forbes article titled, Disney Earnings, Stock Slips as Disney Plus Bleeds Millions of Subscribers, Forbes points out, quote, Shares of Disney dropped in after-hours trading Wednesday following the release of its quarterly financials as the largest entertainment company in the world met revenue expectations but surprisingly shed subscribers in its key Disney Plus streaming service. The firm lost 3.6 million paid subscribers to its direct-to-consumer streaming services, including a 4 million subscriber drop in Disney Plus users, shrinking Disney Plus's total subscriber base to 157 million, unquote. Holy shit! 4 million subscribers gone? That's gonna hurt. I know that Disney Plus has yet to make a profit, but they were projecting that it would begin to make a profit in 2024. What does losing millions of subscribers do to that projection? Farewell, Tidy Ball Man. We hardly knew ye. Honestly, 
Disney Plus is growing in the wrong direction and the market is reacting. Disney waited till after the closing bell of the stock exchange to release their lack of earnings report because they knew the stock would drop badly once the truth was revealed and they were right. Disney's stock lost 4.37% of its value immediately in after hour trading. Think about that. A drop of over 4% in just an hour. It started the day at $103.10 a share, and it was sitting at $96.54 a share as of 6.07 p.m. Eastern Time. But now, it's even worse. As of the time of this recording, the stock had dropped from $103.10 to $92.79 a share, a drop of 6.01%. There's no way for Disney to spin this in a positive way, folks. This is one big black eye for the Walt Disney Company. Think about it. 3.6 million paid subscribers have abandoned Disney, and they have lost 4 million active users. But it's even worse than that, people. According to Forbes, quote, Analysts projected Disney to gain 4.2 million streaming subscribers overall and add 1.7 million subscribers to Disney Plus, unquote. So analysts expected Disney to gain 4.2 million subscribers, yet Disney lost 4 million subscribers. So in total, they are 8.2 million subscribers short of what the market projected they should have. They have 8.2 million less subscribers than they're supposed to have at this point, and their stock price is dropping accordingly. 8.2 million subscribers short is not enough. Now come on, America. You can surely do better than that. Disney has admitted to inserting their not-at-all-secret gay agenda into children's programming. They've tried to insert themselves into Florida politics. Their Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel is a big failure. Star Wars is, in the immortal words of Monty Python, pining for the fjords. And their movies and shows almost universally suck these days. America, you need to do better than that. Why can't Mickey learn? Because he hasn't been hurt enough yet. From what I've heard, and this is only a rumor, albeit a persistent one, Disney has some very creative ways of calculating subscriptions. Basically, I'm told, as long as Disney has a credit card on file, even if the account is not active and isn't paying, they count it as a subscription, albeit an inactive one. Of course, this is only a rumor. But it's at least possible that Americans aren't slacking in that regard. They are actually down even more than they're saying, but holy crap. How many Obi-Wan Kenobis and Peter Pan remakes does it take to make people wake up and step away from this debacle? Even so, Disney is paying the price for their substandard creative output and obsession with woke messaging. As Forbes points out in their article, quote, Disney's stock has far underperformed the broader market in recent years, shedding about 25% since February 2020 compared to a 40% rally for the S&P 500, though it remains the biggest media and entertainment first company in the world by market capitalization." Unquote. Disney is clearly feeling the pain in their stock price, subscribers are fleeing Disney+, Plus, and Disney is creatively bankrupt as well. The article points out that the parks are pretty much what's keeping Disney afloat these days, but the market isn't all that impressed given what looks increasingly like Disney's abject failure in the streaming wars. Do you think that Disney inserting itself into Florida politics, pissing off the state government and losing privileges as a result, has had a bad impact on their bottom line? Well, Harvey, this is what Forbes says about that. Quote, Disney is contending with a messy political battle in Florida, filing a lawsuit against Governor Ron DeSantis for his attempt to revoke the company's special political status for its Disney World theme park outside of Orlando, a move that came after Disney criticized DeSantis' legislative agenda. In a recent note to clients, Daiwa analyst Jonathan Keyes upgraded Disney rival Comcast's price target by about 5% citing Comcast's lack of distraction by Florida, quote, political risks like its much larger parks, studios, and broadcast-slash-linear networks peer, 
unquote. <laughs> so as a result of Comcast lying low and not provoking political controversy, Comcast has gained on Disney, while the mouse's fiscal prospects are, by implication, suppressed by all the kerfuffle and political brouhaha in Florida. Chapek tried to warn the Disney board to stay out of politics. He remained silent on the parental rights bill because he said that whenever corporations weigh in on social issues, it never makes any difference and can be weaponized against them. And once again, it looks like Chapek was correct. Unfortunately, Chapek was also trying to make Disney profitable again by getting rid of the woke wankers riddling the company like termites in a critical support beam, which is one of the many reasons why they had to get rid of his ass. But get this, gang. Oh, you're gonna love this. You know what passes for good news in this fiscal disclosure report? You want to know the bright spot in all this fiscal gloom and doom for Disney? <laughs> Forbes lays it out in a borderline hilarious way here. Quote, Despite the eye-popping exodus at Disney+, Plus, Disney's earnings report included a key silver lining in narrowing streaming losses. Its $659 million loss in its direct-to-consumer content unit was the slimmest in six quarters, down 26% from the last three months of 2022, unquote. Wait, let me get this straight. Forbes is saying that the silver lining for Disney here is that Disney only lost $659 million in direct-to-consumer content, like streaming and so on? Yes, Harvey. They only lost $659 million this quarter. That's the least amount of losses they've had in six fucking quarters. That's like saying Grandpa is doing great because he's only shitting himself three times a day now instead of five. But you still can't let him sit on Aunt Bertha's white couch for obvious reasons. So while the market is feeling bullish on the whole Grandpa diaper situation, stock expectations for Aunt Bertha's white couch futures have plummeted. So in summary, Disney is shitting itself less than it has in the last six quarters financially, but the stench has still driven away millions of content subscribers, and all they have to look forward to is a Little Mermaid remake that's gonna bomb, and Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, and frankly, for me personally, I'd rather change a few diapers. From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, stay angry. Ha, 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 ha.